Today we're going to take a look at how we can automatically create a task in Planner directly from Excel. And we're going to do this with a click of a button. So for example, here I have a list of tasks and some of these should be converted into separate tasks in Planner. I just need to select them, click a button, and they land as separate cards in Planner. Now this is actually quite fun and easy to set up, so let's do it together. Here I'm in my plan in Planner, it's called Training Topics, and I have four separate buckets. So in addition to being able to add tasks manually to this, what I want to do is collect the tasks in an Excel file, and then for the tasks that I want to add to the planner, just highlight the rows and click a button and send these to planner. In this Excel file, I have three columns. One is for vote where the employees can vote for a topic they want to create a training out of, and then the details of the topic. Now, how would this look in planner? Well, the topic should be the name of the task and details should be the notes field in the task. So if I switch to planner here, the topic should be this name here. And when we click inside the card, the details should land in the notes field. Now, in addition to these two, I also want the user to specify a due date and be able to dynamically select the bucket when they use the flow. So as you can see, these two additional fields aren't in my Excel file. I want to add them for additional selection before this information is added to Planner. Now, because I'm going to create a cloud flow, I can use this in Teams as well. So I don't have to switch to Excel online and to Planner online. I can do all of this from Teams. Now let's set this up in Power Automate. So go to office.com, log in and scroll down to get to the Power Automate app. Now what we're going to do is create our flow from scratch. So go to the create button and create an instant cloud flow. Let's give this flow a name, scroll down to find our trigger. In this case, our trigger is for a selected row. So let's go with that and create. Now we just have to select the location and the file name and so on. In this case, my file is in OneDrive, but you can also have yours on SharePoint. So just select the right location. Document library in this case is OneDrive. And now we can browse for the file. Mine is sitting right here. Now, when I click on this drop down for table, I'm going to see the table names in my file. That's the table name I have. It's called table train. We can double check if I switch to my Excel file here under table design, the table is called table train. And now remember, I have three columns here, vote, topic, and details. I don't need the vote inside the card. This is just the information I'm collecting on the Excel side. It's only these two columns that I want to land as a card in planner. And remember, I wanted some additional input fields. So let's go ahead and add them in. Let's select a date first. The name, I'm just going to go with date. And let's change this to please enter a due date. Now, ultimately, I also want to add an input for the selection of the bucket. But that's a little bit more complex. So I'm going to leave that for the end. Next, what we want to do is add our action step. This action step is going to be for planner because once we've selected the row, we want to create a task in planner, which is right here. What we need is the group ID for the task. Mine is finance, the plan ID. Well, the plan ID in my case is training topics and now the title. This is the title of the task. So remember in my Excel file, the title is the topic column. So let's go back and this time we're going to go with dynamic content. We want it to be based on whatever we've selected in this row. So if I scroll down, I should see my topic and it's right here. Let's select that. Next is the bucket ID. This isn't mandatory. I can leave it empty and Power Automate is just going to add a separate bucket to the beginning of the plan. Ultimately, I want this to be based on user selection, but for now and for our testing, let's just select other. Next, I want to add a start date time and a due date time. For the start date time, this is just going to be the timestamp at the moment I run my flow. To get this to be dynamic, I'm going to use an expression. The expression is UCT now, just open bracket, close bracket. This is similar to the now function in Excel and click on OK. Next, the due date time. Well, this is something that the user 
is going to select here. Remember, I called it date. That's what I want to use. I want to use dynamic content and I want to select date from here. Now, if you don't see the dynamic content here, no worries. Just type the name in. You're going to see it and then select it. I don't need the other information here, but what I need is the description of the task. That's something that's missing from the create a task action. Instead, it's in another task. So once I've created the main task, what I want to do is go back to planner and update the task, but not just the task here. I want to update the task details. So if you scroll down, you should see update task details. That's the one we need here. The task ID is the task that we've just created. So this means this is dynamic content. We're not going to make a selection from here. Instead, we're going to enter a custom value and scroll down to select ID. That's the ID of the task we just created. Next is description. Now, in this case, this is dynamic content because it's coming from our Excel table. So if I scroll down here, I should see the column header, which was called details. So that's what I need. Now, I can add a lot more information to this, but in my case, I don't need it. So I'm going to click on save and my flow is ready to go. Let's go ahead and test it now. Okay, so I'm back in my Excel file and I want to test it on this last row here. What I need to do is go to the data tab and click on flow. So if you're using flow for the first time and you don't have it as a separate tab here, you can insert it. Just go to the insert tab, go to office add-ins, search for flow and just add it. And then you're going to see it in the data tab. Now, remember, I'm in Excel online, but you can do all this from Teams directly as well. So from your Teams on your desktop. Now, I haven't selected the entire row and you don't have to do that. You just have to click somewhere in that row, then go to flow. And then you're going to see the name of the flow that's associated with this file, which is this one, the one we just created. Click on run. Now, if it's the first time you're running this, you just have to make sure you're signed in. So in this case, I am. I'm going to continue. Now, here's the date selection. It's asking me to please enter a due date. And I can click on this calendar icon and select my due date. I'll go with 25th of March. And let's run the flow. And done. Now, let's go back to planner and see if this is added. Remember, the bucket that I selected was the other bucket. So it should pop up here. Let's go ahead and refresh this page. Let's scroll over and I can see mock production here. It has the due data selected and the details are in the notes field. So everything works great so far. Let's also try this out in Teams. This way we don't have to open separate tabs and jump around. We can work directly from within Teams. Here I'm in Teams for desktop. I'm in the training channel. And I've already added a planner tab here. It's called training topics. And I can see the current trainings that we've added to this. Now I want to run this directly from within Teams. So let's go to the files tab. Here I can see my OneDrive files. That's the file I was just using. Let's try this on another topic. I'm going to go with management skills here. Let's go to the data tab. To get there, click on this drop down, go to data. I see flow right here. It should recognize the flow that's associated to this file. That's the one. Let's run this, add a due date for this and run the flow. Now we should see management skills added to the other bucket in our planner. So I'm going to switch back to training topics. Let's go to the side here and we already see this added. Okay, so using this from within Teams has the advantage that you don't have to shift between the different applications. Now let's do the last part of making the bucket dynamic. We want the user to select the bucket and our training topic is going to end up in the correct bucket. I'm back in my flow. Let's go ahead and update this. For a selected row, I'm going to add an input a text input. This time though, I want it to be a drop down list. So let's go to more options and select add a drop down list of options. Here I can add in my bucket names. One was personal development, another was operations, skills, and other. So if I switch back to planner, we can see operations, skills, other, 
and the first one is personal development. Okay, so, so far so good. The field is called input. Here's the tricky part. It would be great if I could just go back to create a task and for bucket ID, change this to dynamic content and then select my input field. But the problem is that it doesn't need the name, it needs the bucket ID. So when we're in the drop down here, we can see the names, but in the background, Power Automate is giving the bucket ID to this field. Now, if we just had a drop down with bucket IDs, we could go with that, but no one is gonna recognize what the bucket ID stands for, so we need to go with names. So the way I got around this was to figure out the ID from the name that the user selected. That needed a few additional steps. One step is to get a list of existing buckets. So we're gonna go back to Planner here and list the buckets. What this does is it provides an array that includes the bucket name and the bucket ID. All it needs is the group ID, in my case it's finance, and the plan ID is training topics. Now that I have this array, I can loop through each and check the name of the bucket with the name that the person just selected here. If they're the same, I can grab the bucket ID. So right after list buckets and before I go ahead and create a task, I'm gonna add this loop. You'll find this under control and I need apply to each. Here I need to select an output from the previous steps. In this case, I wanna get my array back that I generated under list buckets. I'm gonna go with dynamic content and select value. Next, we're gonna add an action. This action is again a control action, but this time it's a condition. I'm gonna check if what the user selected, so remember that field was called input. If what they selected is equal to the name of the bucket from this array here, which is right here, the name of the bucket, its value name. That's the only condition I need here. If it's a match, I'm gonna add an action here. This time, I wanna work with variables. So I wanna set a variable to have the value of the bucket ID. So under value, we can see here the ID of the bucket is value ID. Now, when you click in the drop down here, this is empty. There is nothing to select, and that's because I need to initialize a variable before I can use it. And in this case, it's before I get into my apply to each part. I can initialize it right here. So let's go back a step, add an action. Let's go back to variables, scroll down here, and initialize a variable. Here we can give our variable a name. I'll call it select bucket. The type of variable here is a string and I can enter an initial value if I want. So I could put a default bucket ID here. In this case, I'm just gonna leave it empty. Now go back to apply for each under condition for set variable. Now when I click on the dropdown, I can see my variable and I can select it. I'm not gonna put anything in the if no part. Now that I have the value ID, so I have the ID of the bucket, when I go ahead to create the task, I can now use dynamic content here. That dynamic content is my variable. Select bucket and that's it. Now let's save this and let's test it out. So I'm gonna test it directly from Teams. Let's go back to the file. This time I'm gonna run it on multiple rows. So for Excel, PowerPoint and Power Automate, all of these have the same due date and they need to end up in the same bucket. So I'm gonna select them, go to the data tab, go to flow, let's run the flow, select our due date, I'll go to April, April 14th. Now I'm also gonna select my bucket. Now you can of course rename this to bucket, I forgot to do that. In this case, I wanna send these to skills and that's it, let's run the flow. It's done, let's switch to planner. I'll go to the right channel under skills. I get my three tasks created. Each of them include the correct due date and the notes that are in my Excel file. As you can see, Power Automate gives us the ability to easily communicate and control other apps. Now we don't need to learn how to write code, we just need to specify what we want. Now I have other videos on Power Automate and I'm gonna be adding new videos to the playlist. So if you have any suggestions and videos that you want me to do, let me know below. 
Many thanks for watching. If you're new here, welcome and do think about subscribing before you leave.